And then the last, then somebody else came along after that and said, hey, even though it's unbelievably good vo value to offer a monthly subscription to all this great programming, there's a lot of people out there who don't want to pay that money on a monthly basis. Don't want to pay anything. They don't want to pay transactional video on demand. They don't want to pay subscription video on demand. Mm. They want to, they liked the television model, the original television model, where basically you get your programming for free and you just have to watch TV commercials, but you don't have to pay anything. So you don't have to pay for cable. Well, you pay for a cable. Okay. Yeah. You pay. Well now, so they say, Hey, what if we could take cable out of play? So we, you don't need a cable television provider anymore. All you need is a device, like a computer or tablet, anything that can stream the internet or my phone, right? And what if we gave them a platform that they could just stream on their device, no cable TV anymore, no, no monthly fee there, and basically say, hey, here's 40,000 movies and you can watch them all for free, but we're going to stream commercials while you're watching them. So you're going to have to watch commercials. And you can't really bypass them unless you're a real smart techie. You can't really. You have to, they embed them into the shows. Um, you can't sort of time shift them. And they're like, I'm not technical enough to know how to bypass that system. Well, I mean, but, you can just mute it. Okay. For the most part, basically, you're going to watch the commercials. So we come full circle right back to what programming started as TV. And, but now it's, it's on demand. So you can watch whatever you want, when you want, but you do have to watch commercials. So the advertisers now are basically paying for you to watch that content. You get to watch unbelievably great content for free, but you're going to watch their TV commercials because they want to sell you their products. Where is this? This is okay. So this is this. So this new idea formed several years ago and, and th these new platforms. So it went from transactional video on demand to subscription video on demand, iTunes to Netflix, right? The club. And it became advertising video on demand. So what we call AVOD. Okay. Okay. Now there are dozens, if not hundreds of these platforms. The two leading ones are Tubi, T-U-B-I and Pluto right now. Are they not very popular though? Oh no, they're hugely popular. Okay. I mean, clearly you don't use them, yeah. but they are hugely popular. Um, and then some of them came along and said, hey, this is working really well but we can now sort of do a hybrid. And so NBC Peacock, Peacock is one of those platforms, but Peacock offers it two ways. They offer it as a subscription video. They offer their programming as subscription video on demand so you can watch it all without commercials, but they also offer their programming for free with commercials. So depending on what you want to watch and how frustrated you are in watching commercials, there, a lot of their programming you can watch for free if you watch the commercials, or you can choose not to watch the commercials and subscribe to their monthly subscription fee. And what is that? Well, it's just I don't know what this. It's like the same as Netflix. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I don't. You know, Netflix went up month. to twenty bucks. I know. I just heard. Yeah, yeah. That's a lot, Jeff. My my what? Literally, my wife said to me two days ago. She <laughs> said, "You sure you want your Netflix subscription?" And I said, "Yes, I want my. I I'm in the movie business. I love movies. I love their programming." And she, I have pretty well all of them. I have HBO Max. I have Disney Plus. I have I have almost all of them. Remember, this is what I do for a living, right? And I love this content, and I still feel it's unbelievably great value. Like I, I just marvel at the value you can get. Yeah, but maybe you're the the niche. Oh no, I'm I'm not the norm. Yeah, most people yeah. look at it's got gotten to the point now where people are going to have to choose. You know, have to choose what between streaming. Platforms? Yeah, yeah, or there's going to be consolidation because how many can you have? I mean, yeah. first of all, how much programming can you watch? I mean, how many hours? Yeah, actually, you could spend your whole life watching this stuff. It's endless, right? And also, how much money do you want to spend on a monthly basis? You know, on these platforms. The platforms have done a really good job to kind of entice me to go there because each one offers something that I like, especially their, their, their exclusive shows, you know, like for instance, Apple TV, Apple TV plus, I mean, I didn't really want it. Right. But I wanted to watch, they had two great shows, the morning show and Ted Lasso. And I wanted to see those shows. And if I wanted to see them, the only place they were available was on Apple TV plus. So I signed up for it and it's monthly fee, but I, I enjoy it. And I can justify, look at, I know the cost of these programs. I know what goes into them and everything yeah. like that. I, I feel I still getting unbelievably great value.
But I also, I'm a guy who loves to go to the movie theaters. Like I never complained about going to a theater, spending $15 for a movie ticket, you know, taking my whole family and buying $20 popcorn. I, I never complained about that. As a matter of fact, I enjoyed that because I like that movie going experience because I'm a movie guy. So I can't wait to get back. I mean, I started already going back to the movie theaters and I love that. I love watching big movies and big formats on big screens with big sound systems and watch eating decent popcorn. That's an experience for me, which I really enjoy. And I, by the way, I still feel it's really good value. Me personally, you know, if my wife and I go to a movie and we drop between the popcorn and the $50 that night, you know, between whatever we eat. And, you know, a lot of these movie theaters now have the book your own seats and nicer seats. And so you pay a little bit more and you get service at the, like the lot, you know, and that, yeah. so I like that. That's an evening out, an enjoyable evening out. Cause I've had, you know, it's not the greatest food, but it's good food. And I love popcorn and, and, and you've watched an epic, huge movie in a great viewing environment. So for me, that's like really good value. Most people say, ah, why would I do that when I can get, you know, a month of Netflix for used to be $12, whatever it's 20 now, um, whatever. And I would say, yeah, I, I say do both. I say, if you love for movies, sure. go to a movie, have a night out, enjoy it. Um, if not, you know, and I, I do, I do both, you know, it depends how much time I have and what I want to do, but I'll do both. And that's the viewing experience. So anyways, just back to, cause we went off a little track. So, so AVOD came out, which is advertising video on demand, which are these big platforms that offer free viewership. You watch commercials. So now you've got TVOD transactional video on demand, watch one movie at a time, pay for it. SVOD subscription video on demand get a monthly subscription, get all the content you, that they provide. And AVOD, watch all you want on these platforms for free, but watch commercials. So now, and then there's various mixes of them. Some offer transaction, like if you don't want to watch commercial, you can transact an individual movie. Um, some offer subscription where you can, like I said, Peacock. Some offer, you know, all three. So there's now combinations of stuff that they offer for viewership. Now, now the big question is who has what, how much can you consume? So there's likely going to be some consolidation. They'll offer packages. Hey, buy HBO max with Peacock and Hulu and get it for this price or whatever. I you know, obviously made that up. Okay. Whatever. They'll, there's going to be consolidation deals, all this kind of stuff. Who knows what direction that will go in, but it'll always be about what people want to watch and enticing them with the programming to get them to watch it. Like for instance, HBO Max. I mean, my favorite series of all time was Game of Thrones. If they charged $50 a month, I shouldn't say this in a video because they might, um, I would have been happy to pay that to watch Game of Thrones. I mean, what an epic series. An that was a great series. Epic. I mean, unbelievable. Incredible, right? How long did it go on for too? Seven seasons, I think, or six or seven, whatever. That means like six or seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now these days you can binge it all in a week, right? Because the way they, I mean, some, some services offer, they put all their episodes up at one time so you can just binge it because the people want it. They're anxious. It's diff different strategies. Sometimes they hold off. Like I just said, Ozark, they put half of it up. They're going to hold off. There's different ways to strategize. You know, they, they used to do it one episode a week. That's what Game of Thrones was every mm -hmm. Sunday night, you know, so they could keep you engaged for a long period of time, which is a strategy that they use. That's interesting. Yeah. And then sometimes they just throw But that was on cable TV? No, that was on, well, it was originally on HBO cable. Yeah. When it came out. Now all these new shows will on, be on HBO Max. Like HBO new shows are going to be on their streaming platform. Originally it was on their pay right. tele. It would come out as streaming every sunday no, well no no that would come out on so that's cable it was hbo is a cable station um we can't get too deep into that because there's like if i get into the cable world cable tv so basically cable tv is you it's the cable tv is a cable right and that's how you get your tv signal when all right I, so i guess the question i was asking was did so you said the show came out every Sunday. But it was a specialty channel. It was a pay, cha we called it pay television back then. And you would pay your cable station extra money to have HBO. So if, let's say your cable station said, we'll give you 50 channels 
you know, NBC, ABC, CBS, all the main channels. Plus we'll give you say the golf channel and this channel and that channel, and your package will be $35 a month. If you want HBO is a specialty channel. In addition, you pay an extra $5 a month. If you want, you know, Showtime, if you want ESPN. So all these things were add-ons, you know, some people are spending 60, 70, $80 a month because they had all the add-ons, me being one of them, right? So I had HBO because I liked their shows. Um, but you had to have that as an add-on. So every Sunday night, again, curated, like they would say, you know, at whatever it was, nine o'clock at night, you would get a new episode of Game of Thrones for that time frame that they were making it. But that was on the cable. They, like I had HBO was my add-on specialty channel on my cable. Was it on demand though, or would it be from nine to 10 and it, you had to sit down right at nine? Well, you could record it if you want. It, okay. Yeah, no, it okay. was on, it was nine to 10. It was not on demand, but you could time after it aired, after the first airing, you could record it or they, th then after that, they put it on demand so that you could watch it after the fact, but you okay. couldn't watch it before because that's when they right. launched it. Right. But that was the strategy. I mean, they could have put them all up. Like they just did with Ozark. They put up half the season and you could watch it all in one night if you want, which is kind of what I did uh, two nights. But um, so it depends on the strategy of the platform and, and what they feel is the right way to go. But um, depending on, so, but you see HBO is it's still as a cable station, like a specialty station, but HBO Max is a streaming platform. So HBO Max, so HBO comes through your cable company but HBO Max comes through your street. It's a streaming platform that comes through your digital device. Okay. So you can have both. They come, you know, for the most part, if you have HBO Max, you pretty well have all the HBO programming and you pay a monthly subscription fee and you stream it through the internet. Okay. All right. So, okay. Anyways, this was a, we, we I want to get back on track. So basically the, the question on the marketing side was, where do you send your audiences? So you remember we said, Who's your audience? Question number one, who's your niche audience? Mm -hmm. All right. Question number two, how do you connect with that audience? How, how do you do create you awareness? Them? Question number three is where do you send them to see your program? So usually you're going to send them to some type of streaming platform because that's where your programming is going to live usually. Now, distribution is about getting it onto those platforms. Marketing is about getting people to go to the platform to watch your movie. So I'll get into distribution in a minute, like how to get a distributor, how to get onto those platforms. But basically you're going to say to your audience, hey audience, hey core niche audience, I created this great movie and, I, and you should watch it and I want you to go to Tubi to watch it. It's available there or I want you to go to Google Play or iTunes or whatever. You're going to send them to one or several platforms. Now, these days, you might send them to your own website. There's lots of ways to do this, all right? But you need to make it accessible to them so that they can actually stream it, so they can actually access it. And you got to tell them where to go. And that's the whole distribution thing. So we'll get back to that. Okay, so put a pin in that. How do you get it onto those platforms? But you got to put it somewhere where they can go see. It used to be in, in like when I was, you know, growing up, it used to be go to a television station. That's where you could go to get it, right? But then, then it was, hey. What do you mean a television station? Well, you, you, the only place, there was no streaming. So if you wanted to see it, hopefully you said, go to NBC and they're going to air this at seven o'clock on a Thursday night. I mean, on, on TV? Yeah. Okay. I mean, where else would you get it? They would do indie films on TV? Not a ton. Okay. okay. I, I made that up sort of, okay. but that would be the only way to do it. And the answer is yes, they would, but not a lot. Okay. Okay. So the other way to, to would, back then would be go to your local video store and rent it. It's going to be on DVD, rent it at a video store. And then it became transacted on a streaming platform. So that's, it was basically... Where can you get the content? Here's where you can get it, depending on, and in 10 years from now, it, even five years from now, it's going to be something else. Yeah. It'll be like, we're going to send you a computer chip and bed it into your head and movies will come that way. Uh, some crazy thing, right? It'll be something like that. Uh, who knows what the technology will be. But or we'll have a hologram coming from our phone. Something. It'll be, 
who knows? I, I, the technology, I marvel at just how advanced and quickly it moves. But somehow, some way, you'll have a way to, to, um, you know, to absorb your content or to consume your content. Uh, wh whatever that is. I have a theory. We're coming back full circle, just like what you're saying. I feel like we're coming back. Netflix is now twenty dollars a month. I feel like it's going to get more, and like you said, it's going to consolidate onto one platform and that's going to be the one like cable was perhaps and perhaps that'll implode and something else will happen i mean it's a dynamic ever-changing marketplace and that's based on the technology that we know about today there, mm -hmm. there will be other technologies that change the whole thing but at the end of the day it's still a movie's a movie and it's con or a show's a show right it's what we call content that people that entertains people so really how it gets delivered to them changes all the time based on technology, but it's still the programming. So the programming, you know, is what they consume. Mm -hmm. And as long as human beings are not robots and can enjoy consuming programming, it's just how you're going to get it to them. So you just pay attention to what those technologies are and you shift accordingly. But it doesn't change the theory. The theory is know who wants to watch your movies, your mm -hmm. audience, know how to connect to them to tell them to watch them, create awareness and know what technology to send them to so they can actually watch them. Which leads to number four. Remember I said there's four things. Mm -hmm. 